Greetings, intrepid time travelers. Imagine yourself transported back 125 million years to the early Cretaceous coast of what is now Brazil. This was a world where rugged sandstone cliffs met a warm, shallow sea, and soaring through the salty air was a magnificent giant pterosaur. Introducing the tropia, with a wingspan reaching over 8 meters, the tropiognathos was a true master of the skies. Its most striking feature was a long, toothy beak, adorned with distinctive key-like crests on both the top and bottom. This wasn't just for show. This unique double keel was a marvel of evolutionary engineering. It strengthened the beak and optimized airflow, making it the perfect tool for its specialized hunting technique. Picture this. Tropiognathus rides the onshore winds, gliding effortlessly above the waves. It uses the updrafts from the cliffs to gain height with minimal effort while scanning the waters below. And when it spots a school of fish, often driven to the surface by large marine predators, it swaps down. Its dip and skim feeding strategy was a beautiful ballet of precision. The beak would slice through the water, with its angled teeth securing the slippery meal, while a specialized palate cleverly channeled water out and the fish in. The life here was a constant dance with the elements. The ocean was rich with food, but also patrolled by sharks and formidable ichiosaurs. Thanks to its superior altitude and glide ratio, Tropiognathus could often spot danger from afar and abandon a risky dive. Storms were a double-edged sword. The powerful winds could provide incredible lift, but the chaos could also be deadly. These clever flyers learned to ride the storm's edge, using the energy without getting caught in the treacherous center. Even their social lives were fascinating. Aston broke. The Tropiognathus colonies would perched on cliff ledges and engage in an elaborate display parades with their crests gleaming in the morning sun, with signal status and intent to rivals, reducing the need for costly physical fights. Everything about this animal was built for efficient flight. Their skeleton was a masterpiece of lightweight yet robust engineering, with thin, cross-braced bones. This allowed it to stay airborne for long periods. While conserving its precious energy, when the wind died down, they would land and wait. In order to go airborne again, they would use a powerful quadrupedal vault launching themselves into the sky to catch the warm thermals rising from the sun-baked rocks. The story of Tropiagnathis is more than just a glimpse into a lost world. It's a lesson in aerodynamics, structural design, and the economics of wind. A true testament to nature's ingenuity. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the slipstream of history. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and let us know in the comments what ancient flyer you'd like to see next. Your adventures in time and flight awaits.